Hello, you're listening to On The Payroll, my podcast about project management, consulting, Salesforce delivery, all sorts of CRM platforms, sometimes databases, leadership, teamwork, all sorts of these sort of things I really, really enjoy. Actually, my podcast is just an opportunity for me to talk about this with people that I like and I record them so that my readers and my listeners can listen in and maybe gain some valuable information that could help them in their professional lives. In today's episode, I speak to Kamalji. We connected at um, Capgemini, where we both worked at one point, and we talk about quite importantly, the network and work that he's doing to help the professionals, especially in India. And it has been a quite tough year last year. COVID's hit, a lot of people have lost their jobs and trying to progress themselves. And we talk quite a bit about that, the challenges that they're facing and the things that he's doing, the things that we could all be doing to help them. So I invite you to listen in on our conversation, which I found really, really quite inspiring. And I hope that you do too. Thank you. Enjoy. Hello, Cam. Welcome to my podcast on the payroll. How are you today? I am very well. And again, it's, it's I think this is our after a long time meeting. And great to meet you again. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. We met uh, when I was doing induction for Capgemini and yeah. uh, now uh, and now we've got an opportunity for a longer, longer conversation about um, hopefully some topics that both of us will find very interesting. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Now, what I what I'm really, really interested to know is about your journey from where you have been to where you are today. And I think the narrative on how you've got to this particular point would be quite interesting because I see from your profile, you've done quite a lot of consulting in different areas. So if you can just give us a, a story of come basically, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's, uh, let, me, let me spend some time on it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so Cam is a civil engineer, like I've done civil engineering back in India and uh, even I started uh, uh, IT as a as a very much into hobby. I saw my brother playing games and on computer with the big box and uh, you know there was a kind of a Tom and Jerry playing on a, on a computer. This is how I picked up actually IT and, and then jumping into um, computer hardware um, networking and and learning um, the professional courses on IT, and that was from basic to one year diplomas, two year diplomas, kind of stuff basically, right? And then from there, I jumped on um, hardware networking training and then software development. So I picked up some software development skills from India and uh, um, spent lot. I think two years I spent in the whole uh, training plus development and the whole north india i covered like nine to eleven states where i met a lot a lot of engineering students where they're working on microsoft technologies and uh, that time google was also re i'm talking about between 2002 to 2006 basically. you know like microsoft millennium was coming and you know then after new tech microsoft booming with 2000 and all that yeah it was it was a great thing certifications and stuff recently started with microsoft um so heavily involved with engineering students plus obviously improving my skills in development and, and database and then the time come to come to uk with my missus and uh, then and and then uh, yeah we started uh, kind of i started a completely new journey couldn't speak english that time even one of the company <laughs> they said sorry cam we can't take continue with you and it's not in my cv but uh, but that was actually it was it was like went down and then went up so it's five days later they said cam you should not go to as a trainer should start somewhere you know where you can involve with with daily talking and you can do your practice 
end up in BlackBerry. And uh, so, yeah, this is where I started from level one, level two, and solutions and uh, enterprise, post sales, pre sales, travel to Europe, travel to Middle East, travel to back in India to do the projects, and spend six years in uh, securities, Microsoft, uh, sorry, uh, mobile apps and databases a lot. And then talking to clients, running the big ever sessions with IT directors and help, uh, help desk teams and um, training them on product solutions, how this will work, work closely with the, with the sales teams as well. And, um, done a bit of uh, pre-sales work with them. Uh, where where the sales you know needs to be done it was a learning time i haven't done much but but i did a lot of travel around around the you know europe and uh, in middle east and and around the uk um different areas but yeah it was good so then i moved uh made redundant moved to contracting and you all have you know what happened the fall in blackberry and we all moved on and from there then a bit of hiccups started with contracting and trying to find the right right area for me because, you know, I had already a mixture. So by that time, I had development experience. I had mobile security, databases, talking to clients. So I had like, I, I already built kind of four different skills, right, where I can help the businesses, right? And, um, and this is where I got caught with another company where they said, can we have a... Microsoft CRM, dynamic. I said, okay, why are you talking to me? Because they said, you have a VB, Visual Basic experience. Why can't you pick up this project? I said, right. Okay. So it was an API integration. I think that was the entry to like, let's say is that Salesforce is waiting for me. Somebody waiting for me. Oh, Cam will contact us. But I went there as a Microsoft. I was looking for developers and they provide developer outsourcing basically so we can work on that api project so i end up talking to the guy and he said here is salesforce start learning get into see if you can get a job got a job application support <laughs> went into application support where is a lot of migrations were happening between cbell oracle and uh, .NET plus salesforce people were moving away from cbell moving away from oracle from like I would say the legacy system to the new ones and and started with admin support again back back to admin support you have to learn the product to get you know to go to your next future then right so and then slowly picked up again that was good times I spent with Vodafone again and I learned a lot different projects and uh, learnings uh, about the you know whole journey about Salesforce then again Redundancies happen in Vodafone, uh, so, which is fine. It's it's a part of the game. We learned, I learned twice basically about redundancies, which is I'm expert in it. So if it happened, I can I can guide someone on on that as well. So and then end up in uh, uh, contracting again and spend two and a half years. But I I picked up as a Salesforce skill for contracting. Worked as a consultant as a. Um, uh, yeah, like I was very hands-on consultant initially, like a lot of admin skills and working. So I did two jobs, admin and business uh, flows and how it should work and all that. And then, then obviously, I wanted to switch to service industry. Uh, very mission, a big mission to get as an end user to service industry. It's, it's very critical, not easy. I get no from everywhere. Sorry, Cam. Sorry, no, your contractor. No, you need a little bit more experience, and you know, like it's challenging with the package, challenging with this and that. But nobody wants to straight away accept you as a service because they want to train you. I realized slowly. I know why now. I know why they were saying no, but because there is a there is a difference, right? It's you know, it's 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 understanding. But then got job in service industry and. It was a good learning again, and uh, it's uh, I'm in service industry now, uh, two and a half years, yeah, nearly, nearly three years, and uh, it's going, it's going better, and my focus is now more working on solution side and more functional, and uh, you know, so Lexi, and there will be a learning coming for me, maybe discovery phases and 
um, you know, something this side of where I can more go back to my previous where I, I was enjoying pre-sale stuff, uh, you know, where, where we work closer to the uh, companies, suggest the solution and work scoping and um, yeah, discovery planning. So that, that, will, that will be my future. So here am I and yeah, so overall, I am, I'm a full package, Microsoft, infrastructure, <laughs> database, software, CRM. So yeah, 17, 18 years, sorry. Yeah. I was just thinking, I was just looking and listening to you and I think your path mirrors mine quite a bit. Oh, um, brilliant. So I was also in Microsoft. I was working with Microsoft partners, we were doing infrastructure. So mm-hmm. networks, proxy servers at those time, you know, yes. SMS, this was even before. Oh, that, yeah. That's you know, uh, MS, yeah. MS Mail before Exchange. Yes, uh, definitely, yeah. Novel Network, oh my God, you know. Um, definitely, yeah. I, I remember there was a, even we talk about Facebook, but I'm talking about now uh, Microsoft and Google. Google has a, I don't know if you used to heard that, Orkut. I don't know yes. if you heard that Orkut, one. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, Orkut. Yes. Yeah. I, I, Orkut was I, I, very big in India. It, it was very big, it was. It was very big, yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's a... So, I, I came to UK around half um, mid-2006, mid basically. Yeah, it was it was challenging uh, because... So mid-2006 no. you came? Yes, yeah. Oh, I was just looking at your profile. I was trying to pinpoint when you came to England. So, 2006 uh, to now, we're talking about five years and you managed to pick up English so well that you oh, are doing time facing roles you mean you i mean you mentioned earlier on that you're actually yes, yes, doing I presentation did. at yes. the sea level suite and that's that's quite impressive actually thank you so yeah it's it's i don't know it was very maybe you know the, the thing is i think i know what that happened the thing is i came let's say i came on 20th and i got the job within seven days and they said hey you go you need to train these engineering students and i was like was it the right thing and it, i didn't even they didn't took proper interview uh, like you know like normally but even in india i was a mct microsoft certified trainer if i used to hire somebody i used to do two three presentations of that guy if i'm hiring someone i should do it but these guys they didn't do anything they just said no you're an mct just start and I was like, come on, guys, you know, I just came seven, ten days before. Just I'm, I'm just new B in the UK. And if you're trusting me, I can try my best. But it's understandable, but it's fine. <laughs> so, but here I am, right? So I'm good. I can talk now. <laughs> That's quite super that they took the chance on you to, to do this. And yeah, that, definitely. They took it, but it didn't work. So it's fine. We learned and cool. moved on. Excellent stuff. Yeah. So I just, again, you know, kind of looking at the path and journey that you've come. You mentioned that you've gone through redundancies twice. Um, So this is something, obviously, a lot of people have been experiencing last year, specifically due to COVID. There was a huge amount of layoffs. Um, There's a lot of people who were on furloughed and... um, which not every country and every company has had the privilege to do so. Um, can you talk about how you dealt with your redundancy and how you kind of like faced it and what did you do to, you know, to move progress from that? Um, yeah, redundancy, it's, it's, it's scary as well when it comes down first time and Especially, it hits more if you if you don't have anyone around you who never who never seen that, right? And I was with family, and let's say my missus and her family is belong all all of, all are always UK UK born and all everybody, right? And they never actually seen redundancy in in, in their lifetime, but whenever like whoever worked in it, right? It was quite scary and. Um, and I spent last three months, you know, like uh, the consultation period. And this is where companies helped um, every company like in UK. They, they normally help to train, uh, you know, how to deal, helping you to connect with agencies and other recruitment people uh, who provide help on it. I was getting that, but but it was it was really scary in the sense of 
Why me? Why suddenly? What happened to this company? Why can't they survive? Where do I go? I only know BlackBerry. Then it will change me. I have to restart again. So you know, like all these questions coming to my mind, right? But then, then when I started interviews, yes, I failed two, three. But then I, I, I picked up again, right? Yeah, it was just I think two, three interviews. They, they just said no, sorry, no, next role, no, no, next role. You're not fit for this one. But then after two, three, one, I was, I was like becoming little confident and uh, started facing things where what I need to prep work for for the interview. And this is where I first time noticed I should plan some journey when I'm explaining my 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 flow, my process, basically to someone. Guys, what I did and what I'm capable for, I should give them a proper example so they don't get confused. Basically, what I'm looking and they can put me in a right place where I what I want to do and what they want to achieve from me with my skills. Right? I don't want to show them everything I know. No. They want to focus according to the company brand, what they want to. So, so this is where after three, four interviews, I started changing slowly. And yeah, it's it's normal again. After ten days, fifteen days, oh sorry, ten or fifteen interviews, sorry, I I actually got the job. And yes, it was again. the The big one was is the learning about contracting. So I started as a contractor. It was a small contract role, but again. It's I learned something new, and I know how to battle as a contractor. Do you need a con accountant? You can be a sole trader. What is limited company? And this, that was another achievement for me with with the contracting, right? So loved it. I learned it, and from there, become more confident, right, guys? It's fine. It's only redundancy. Then I started guiding people. Don't freak out. It's just a redundancy. It's like you are doing the small, small project. Sometimes, then you have to move on. Get ready for it. Make sure you know how to talk to the people, how to do interviews. And that's the only skill you need to work on it and carry on. Wow, that's quite a useful way of looking at um, looking yeah. at uh, life. Um, I think I, excuse me, I also look at things that way. Actually, and specifically, I look at jobs that way. Um, in terms of each job is a transaction or a project, as you as you put it. Yeah. So during this time, when I'm engaged with you and I'm working for you, I will do my best and I'll learn as much as I can. And in return, I provide value to you. And at some point, yeah. maybe that kind of relationship will end and it's moving on to the next stage. So I'm I'm guessing the way that you've approached it helped you when the second redundancy came around. I wasn't scared at all. <laughs> Honestly speaking, and I know I said, "Look, you know what? There's the thing is, yeah." With my first one, I started look looking jobs as soon as we know, or because it's it's just the guidance we receive from anybody around us. But with the second one, yeah, we know. I said, "Ah, oh, fine. Let's just wait till when we have twenty days left. I need to make sure my CV is ready. I know I need to focus on this area, and I just." Jump on, you know. Do I, but again, the question is: after the redundancy, do you want to take twenty days break? That's that's general question. Or because people do prep work for interviews, some people really they want they want relaxed time for interviews. Uh, but again, there are two type of people. <laughs> One, they just straight because you do get chance to go on interview. You you do get free day off from the companies, like you know any interview. Just tell your manager, guys. I'm going for interview, right? They won't say anything now. But what I did, I did. I I was actually. I said, look, I'm already ready. So I talked to my manager. I said, can I go for interview? I said, yeah, go for it if you want to. And I I all I need to tell my appointment time. When I'm going, do I need half day off? Do I need full day off? Depending on what I'm doing. I got redundant on thirtieth, and I got I start my next job actually on first of first. Basically, yeah, but they were colleagues of mine. They took like some people did, and it's it's just a very personal choice. People do take break. I didn't take break. I just straight on because I was, I think I was in love with CRM that time so much. I wanted to get on on Salesforce that time. That that's what was my you know aim to be honest. So that made me a little different. 
I think just listening to you narrate the two different redundancies and how you approach, I can see, you know, the first time you're talking about the first one and how much fear you had and so much worry. And then the second time, because of the mindset change, instead of, from what I observe, instead of fear and worry, it seemed to be you were prepared. And also there seemed to be an anticipation of the next role in your life that there seemed to be quite a 180 degree change in how you look at things. Would you, would you say that's true? That is true. That is true. And I was very grateful as well at the same time, because I trained two people that time who was kind of did that their first redundancy that time. And I changed their mind and I managed to help them guys. And that was, like people come to you if, if you're blessed with something. Otherwise, people don't ask you, right? So, gratefully, I help two people. <laughs> I'm, I'm really helped. So yeah, it's changed my mind big time as well. Fantastic. You know? So very good. It feels like this is a, a good segue into what I wanted to ask. Because I know you have quite a big network in India due to your previous role and what you're currently doing now in terms of being yeah. quite active on social media. How, so COVID's hit a lot of people quite hard. And what I know is what I read in the news and what comes up in my feed. But you have a lot closer relationship with a lot of people who have been going through some tough times. Can you just kind of paint a picture of what's been happening and what's currently happening right now? And whether they're coping or not coping, can you just... Share some of that with us. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's very, very tough time, right? Um, I'm not saying for everyone because, you know, India India is always, I, I consider, because I'm from India, number one, and I've always seen two different pictures of India. One, I'm in very good shape. One, I'm struggling, right? So, so these two things, if I say it, I am struggling. It's it's actually more. You can't see that every day. But when you involve at local level with the people who are actually working and helping them, then then that number is is increasing increasing every day, right? Because you helping them, you see one person, two people, ten people, fifty, hundreds are coming, right? I'm helping a lot of students, a lot of engineering students this time as well. And and it's it's I started this journey from last six months and a couple of actually YouTubers, they actually contacted me. Cam, I'm getting a lot of questions regarding the life of, you know, software developers in, in India or if they want to go abroad, can they go easily, right? What What kind of qualification do they need in India? To, to get to some level where they can they can you know achieve what they want to achieve right it's not they're not getting quality life there they are but you know like it's it's a, it's a two different things basically right as i said do i have a quality life already yes you are doing and some people are unable to even spend money to those colleges where they can get campus right so i was in the same situation when i was doing my uh, civil prior to civil engineering, my parents couldn't afford that level of money. Like with we're looking at good numbers, right? Same situation there. They can't go to those colleges or big labels, basically, where they can Accenture or any cognizant or Capgemini or any company can go there and pick up. All right, guys, come here. We'll give you this big package. No, they have to go start from somewhere. And they don't even know sometimes how to prep for my CV. What line is it? Everyone just said Android developer. Okay, shall we all start Android developer? Someone just came in and they said, okay, start Salesforce is, is booming. So nobody is telling them, man, you are a data science student. It's it's a data science machine learning. It's, it's actually a big thing. You can control multiple CRMs. Why are you only looking Salesforce, right? Because you are a backbone. But no, the guy, he's just dependent on maybe someone. Again, these are the things missing. And COVID, because of the COVID, 
those guys are kind of their the career is about five years behind now because education is went back and it hit in UK as well. I'm not saying not, but it hit more in India where people are still, you know, is they struggling, right? So it's we uh, again. I'm just it's very emotional at the same time. Sorry, but it's it's I, I'm trying basically wherever we can. We created groups now. And uh, you know what people are asking the questions. I try my best not to switch because people thinking me as they are a sales force. They come, they just say, "Cam is sales force everything." And I'm I'm trying my best, guys. Don't focus only only this. I am a sales force person. Yes, that's my current job. But if you look at my LinkedIn, I'm a multi skill person basically, right? So you should focus on first what you doing. you are a engineering student of something else right first let's try there there are jobs there yes there are jobs in europe there are jobs in uk you can still even only c++ can take you really in a very good level so don't freak out that you learn only sell c++ c++ and you can't get it nobody you're wrong focus on it and and learn something good level find a company start basics and pick up the job but yeah we we trying basically so let's see how far we can go oh, i acknowledge you for you know the kind of help that you're providing to this group of people and trying to help them with their cvs and advice and things like that given the kind of um bre- breadth of skills and experience that you have had it sounds like what you're able to share is providing good value uh let me just turn to just kind of projects because that's that's an area that interests me and uh, obviously definitely self as well and um, can you think of some of the projects that you've had that's been hugely memorable that has changed you in some way shape or form Can you share with us your experience and how that's made an impact on your life? Um yeah, um number 1 since after Vodafone I picked up a very big project again and number 1 that completely changed me thinking about Salesforce and a lot of uh, achievements have been done because a lot of research happened around that time about Salesforce how the tool worked how to get the developers how to outsource basically and how to work with outsource different teams right and and how do you get a quality work and monitoring um that was one of the project which blew my mind and uh, and completely changed as a you know cam you can be a consultant right <laughs> and that i got the label basically on that from that job is big time and then then after um um yeah i i i learned and uh, you know uh, i'm here today as a as a senior consultant so yeah excellent stuff you brought up something that you know is quite close to my heart which is working with offshore team members uh-huh. and it's something that i find fairly easy to do myself mainly because i come from i you know i'm not english i'm not british and therefore mm-hmm. i am quite attuned to the fact that there is cultural barriers sometimes as well as language barrier can toy big toy i i i know where you're coming from now <laughs> i i get it yes go on i yes. I'll, i'll let you finish first then i will yeah. tell you okay excellent stuff. so so <laughs> i'm i'm quite sensitive and quite attuned to this which yeah. makes it easier for me to connect to my team because i'm always very careful about what i say how i say and whether the message is received etc cetera, etc cetera. um can you give me your thoughts and your feelings on how people have managed offshore relationships so far where they've gone wrong and what's the best way to do it from your point of view i don't want to be rude but i have to say things sometimes because i think we here sometimes really rude with offshore team we do and i have seen it in in many calls when we talking to offshore team right and and we think they are setting robots basically and they just going to imagine things and they're going to work on it right but if we get the same level 
here of experience and same person, same skills and that person can say, stop, you need to get this thing fast, then I will work. That's a developer answer. But offshore, the poor, uh, the poor in the sense like they either they shy or they don't want to say something, they get pushed back for no reason. It's not even their fault basically. And then, then they just have to work. I, it's what type of this cultural different. And we, we are in this service industry, especially sitting in UK. We are more than, I would say, 20 years of this experience in UK. Everybody, did we not learn this simple task, basically? Be nice. I don't know. <laughs> let, me pick, let me pick on that, actually, because I think it's quite unique because both Malaysia and huh? India are ex-colony. <laughs> it's British colony and yeah. therefore there is residue of how we are to the West there's a <laughs> perception that West is better generally so if you can get a job in the West or you have a Western person hired in your company so let me share an anecdote one of my very earliest jobs um, we hired um, an Irish guy and he's white <laughs> he gets paid more than you know, the other people in the company, but he wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. And it was just bragging rights. And I'm feeling that it's, China is the same. I know you can, you, there, there's such a thing called rent a foreigner. Yep. If you're white, if you're from the West, you're better and, 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 and we are not as good. So there's an inferiority complex as a general rule already. If someone white says it, then it must be true or correct or more accurate and I'm wrong. You know, I'm broadly generalizing. There is still yep. that sense. Um, obviously, you and I have lived in the UK, and so you know, we kind of got over that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but those who, you know, are still there, there is a little bit of that, and therefore, there's a sense. So it's probably a vicious cycle in that there's a sense that I can't say anything because I might be wrong. There's high chance I'm no. wrong. <laughs> you know, there is perception. Definitely, yeah. Um, which then perpetuates a situation whereby they don't want to tell you that something's wrong until the end. And the other person over here who may have started the relationship in quite a rough manner by not mm -hmm. being sensitive and being rude, as you say. Yeah. You know, because the other person doesn't want to tell them that they're encountering an issue or that they are not clear because the instructions provided have not been clear. And then you get to a point where, you know, some time has passed and that whatever item that's supposed to be worked on, addressed, hasn't yet been completed. Yeah, definitely. And therefore, it's a vicious cycle because then the person gets really upset and has some other ideas about what, you know, why you guys haven't finished this piece of work. And it's just... Yeah. It's it's a lot. It's actually, we need... Um, we I try my best to control these things wherever I involved and I, I I I try my best basically but and because of this situation I had I had like number of situations happened with architects <laughs> right you know because have to be have to say that right I have to stop people basically and I'm not saying that it's it's uh, it's 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 a knowledge skill it's it's more about customer services talking to your colleague writing a technical overview you know all these kind of skills basically where, where where some people are really missing because writing instructions for developer is a big big job right and it's a big responsibility and same time talking to a functional person is a very important because functional person is a, is a very central person between client and tech team if you are not talking to functional personnel properly and you want to be egoistic then tough you're not going to get anything which you where you want to achieve right and and that's that situation that kind of gap um i think i managed to fill some somehow in my current project basically but previously i have seen these situations multiple times where uh you know you you have to line something and you have to escalate sometimes you have to talk to someone to resolve these things and it's it's actually very very hard it, that in in local left is very hard sometimes 
in a project is very hard. I was just uh, talking to someone else on our podcast and we were talking about, I think in a past life, if I stayed <laughs> within Microsoft, well, I probably would have stepped into a solutions architect type role, mm-hmm. you know, okay. so specializing instead of going down the project management role. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, so my mentor actually told me that um, I seem to be able to get people to work together better mm-hmm. in a team. And therefore, maybe my calling was down a PM route. And so as a project manager, luckily, when those situations that you say arise, I have some authority to actually, you know, kind of like cut it out at that point. Mm-hmm. And that makes the project a lot better yeah. because this is the tone that I'm setting, right? Um, this is not how you talk to team members. We all have a valid reason to be here and to be able to do, to provide input but from yeah. what you're saying though that it just highlights the point that it's a leadership issue somehow somewhere because you as in your role mm-hmm. isn't <coughs> able to set the tone you can do your best yeah utilizing with the architect and your team yeah. but it requires somebody else to actually say hey what you're doing is actually not acceptable. The assumptions you're making about other people being able to read your mind, you want things done this way and it, whatever not is just really unrealistic. And another point of another point I want to pick up is that they probably don't do this with another person, another English person, I'd say. Um, yes, I, I've got so many live examples for that one. Definitely. It's very sad. Um, I'm not calling myself English, but I am right now from last 10 years, right? And right, it's it's just, that's the way. And I think, you know, like, as as I know more closer now, service industry, especially, you know, like openly, I now know how, how it is. So, so let's see, um, there are always good people like you pay. And to be honest, and luckily I've got some someone this time as well. So, which is good and uh, we can I, i'm not saying nothing is impossible there is always one person not two people one person you need to just handle it that's it <laughs> so we'll find a way always yeah okay uh come and just before we close you know, i'm quite respectful of your time um, no worries t- what so i know you're hugely hugely active in the uh social media space you've got your own youtube channel and Thank what you. I'd like to know is uh-huh. a couple of things. One is what drives you to do what you're doing and what are the kind of things that excite you moving forward? Uh, YouTube is, I would say, COVID. Because of the COVID, it came up, right, in my mind. Because, as I said, I was talking last year in... I think August 2020, July, August time, I started talking to many people in in India where I got this idea, where I got involved with a couple of groups and um, they were getting, uh, they wanted to get some help. And I started and I said, look, I've got knowledge. Rather than sitting on one, one call, I won't be able to, you know, provide that level of knowledge. And uh, then I said, let's guys, let's just prepare a session. So then we did some sessions. And this is where I get kick. And I said, Cam, let's train more and more people. And and this is the way where we can train. Rather than focus only on technical, I would like to do requirement helping business because business is also struggling same time. How to write a requirement, right? So we need to help people. We, I don't, I'm not saying because people are there who are not from a technology, let's say I'm a best business analyst, but I don't know Microsoft CRM. I'm a best CBA, the BA for something, but I'm not a best BA in Salesforce. We need to help those guys so they know the know some stuff, right? That's one part. Second part, students want to learn Salesforce. Why they want to learn Salesforce? First, they need to know. And some students were saying, Cam is so expensive to learn Salesforce. Why? Why do I have to pay? 
I said, who told you that sales course is very expensive to learn? It's free. You need to just click the right button and get there one by one by one, right? You will get there. It's all free. Don't go spend 500,000. Well, I'm, I'm just talking about Indian money now. 50,000 bucks, right? Which is a lot. 50,000 bucks is big money to spend over there. And like, I said, no, don't. Don't do that, guys. It's a COVID time. You need to save money. Go there. Right. And then I, I did these sessions on someone else's YouTube channel, basically. Then then I started with my own. And I'm, I'm, this is my aim. My future is basically I want to help many and many. And we, I will be coming with from the basics to, you know, increase more and more knowledge awareness. Not only one product, there will be multiple products. I will be working, focusing on students and a business business. Both. So. Yeah, that's my aim. Outstanding. I think your your desire to help people actually kind of shines through in everything that you've told me in terms of how you've dealt with redundancy and how you've helped the two new trainees with your experience already and also with uh, these other um, students and professionals in India who want to better their lives and to improve their professional career. So. Uh, I acknowledge you for the work yeah. that you do. Uh, and um, so can you share with me what your YouTube channel is and how can people find you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, I got my even unique URL in YouTube. So which is, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's um, KSM1313 Live. Excellent. That's my YouTube channel. Thank you. Good stuff. So with that, Cam, I really thank you. I appreciate you for taking the time to speak to me today. And um, I'm pretty sure there's probably a part two at some point when you are super famous. <laughs> It'll be good to catch up again then. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to support people wherever we can. You know, it's uh, thank you. Thanks for your time as well. Hey, great talking thank again. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.